What e-learning tools will be popular in 2021? In this video, I'm going to be thinking out loud to share some of my thoughts. Welcome to e-learning out loud. My name is Joe Suarez and welcome to a new year. It's 2021. What e-learning tools do you anticipate using this year? I have a list of things that I anticipate using and chances are it will be wildly different from your list. Now, why is that? When we talk about tools for learning or e-learning, we're intentionally or unintentionally lumping together lots of folks from different roles. So I'm thinking of corporate roles, nonprofit roles, higher education, and K through 12. Personally, I come from a corporate background, having worked in several different industries over the course of my career. So my list this year is very different from what your list will be. And there's nothing wrong with that. And it's something just we just have to acknowledge when we have th these types of discussions. And it's something that's fully on display in Jane Hart's annual survey, Top Tools for Learning. And you can find that it, by going to the URL toptoolsforlearning.com. I think diving into this list published on September 1st of 2020 will help us anticipate what types of tools will be used in 2021. And I have three insights about this survey that I want to share with you today. The first one is pretty obvious because of the global pandemic that we're all living through. We see a rise in collaboration and video meeting tools such as Zoom and Microsoft Teams and Slack and things like that and lesser known tools like Whereby. Another thing we see is a downward trend for e-learning authoring tools such as Articulate Storyline, Adobe Captivate, and Lectora now owned by the e-learning brothers. So I have a couple thoughts around why we might be seeing this trend. The first one is that there might just be so many new tools being added to this list that it's driving down some older, older things that we might have been seeing that used to be a little more near the top. And there's just so many new tools coming out that do one thing and do it very well that are be becoming very popular and are making their way onto the list. The other thought that I have is that maybe, finally, after um, years, we are finally seeing a decrease in the production and over prescription of e-learning courses as the kind of be all end all learning solution. I would love to see this. I, I would actually welcome this. Even as an e-learning developer who has made his career out of creating e-learning courses and primarily uses Articulate Storyline and some other tools uh, now as an independent freelancer, I would welcome this trend to see um, less courseware and more a broad range of more learning solutions, whether it be video or virtual reality, augmented reality, whatever it be. The last trend I want to talk about on this list is YouTube. YouTube has been dominating the top of this chart for quite some time, which should be no surprise. YouTube is the number one way that people learn things. Um, th but the reason I bring it up is because I find that rather interesting because I don't think Google is intentionally, I, I, let me rephrase that. I don't think Google is directly intentionally setting themselves up to have YouTube be the best number one learning platform around. I think indirectly they are in being intentional with that. And what I mean by that is they have created this amazing platform where creators can slowly over time fine tune their content to be exactly what their audiences are looking for and want. And as a result, I think we see things that are in high demand that we wouldn't otherwise think were in high demand. I think of video game walkthroughs, makeup tutorials, and there's so many little niches of just people sharing things with the intent to help others out and help them learn. And obviously here I am with this channel with the intent to produce video tutorials and explainer videos and working and thinking out loud, learning out loud. Um, to help others in their pursuit of their different things around e-learning and e-learning development. So I really encourage everyone to go check out Jane Hart's survey. Again, that's at toptoolsforlearning.com. And 
I, I want to know what tools do you expect to be using for your e-learning in 2021, whether that be for your own personal learning or using different tools to produce or facilitate, encourage, whatever learning uh, with your audiences, training audiences, learning audiences. I don't know what to call them. I don't want to assume. Uh, so let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video.